The works now on BBC Two goes on tour with Ronnie Size and Represent, a musical collective from Bristol. The film contains strobe lighting effects. has got potential to be the music of the future. The Americans have got their hip hop, at not And I think this is like, this is England's thing, jam on bass. All right, now we're getting into this sound. Pick it up, shake it up, turn it upside down. Introducing to you, this year's top boys, this year's Mercury winners, producers of that bad album, New Forms, and newly released single, Brown Paper Bag, Ronnie Sides and the Represent Crew. So Ronnie Sides and the Bristol-based Represent Collective have won the 1997 Mercury Music Prize. This is probably the most radical winner in the history of the prize. Drum and bass is still very much an underground movement in Britain, but tonight it really goes overground as New Forms wins Album of the Year. You know, people said we were crazy, but we just believed in what we were doing. You know, die, shove, dynamite, you know, crust. We've all, you know, been working hard for this, and this isn't, you know, just about me. This is about, you know, this is... <laughs> By the time we came to the judges meeting, that was a record that most of us didn't take off our timetable. The most interesting creative music that's happening in Britain is happening around about the dance club scene. So I think for New Forms, one of its great achievements was to very much somehow shape and make us feel this is what music is now about in Britain in 1997. There's a, a whole lot of people out there who have not heard of this music. And when they hear it, it'll be something new and different. And the whole album is a reflection of an era which influenced me where there was this whole influx of music from America, music from Jamaica, music from Europe, you know, hip-hop, reggae, all these different musics were coming into England, like flooding into England.
sometimes people hear the name drum and bass and they immediately switch off. But that shouldn't be the case, man. They shouldn't let the names overshadow the music. We're not mad, man. We're not mad scientists trying to create some crazy thing, man. We're, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're future musicians, man. We're pioneers of a new music, man. That's what this music is. is about trying to look into the future. Our drum and bass is, is totally different. You know, it's a whole different world. It's, it's like when I talk about jazz music and the, the ultimate is the imagination in jazz, it's the same thing for drum and bass. You've arrived at a very interesting point, if you want, in the late 20th century, in the sense that the music we call popular music is really, it actually kind of touches on the avant-garde. Each time someone like Ronnie Sires wins something like the Mercury Music Prize, you shift and broaden the parameters of what is popular music. You know, and you begin to realise, really, the music that is popular can be about so many more things than a verse, a chorus, a hook, a bass line. There is a new generation of people who've grown up through rave culture to whom that was their punk music, who do hear music in a different way, who've grown up through hearing music in clubs, loud, dancing, going to raves, driving around the M25, you know, looking for searchlights in the sky. That is their Friday and Saturday night. So I do think, for a real appreciation of what's going on, you have to get into that frame of mind. Um, you've got to stop saying it doesn't sound like the Beatles, you know. <laughs> um, it just sounds different, you know. I think one of the main things that we have done in Bristol is not copied anybody. Everyone, I think, has got that same attitude. They want to pioneer a new sound. They want to do something that no one else has done before. A lot of people, a lot of influential people have come out of Bristol. I don't know what they're eating for breakfast, but I want some. <laughs> Bristol plays a really important part in British music in the 90s, really, in terms of artists like Ronnie Size, in terms of artists like Tricky, Massive Attack, Portishead, all of these people who've come out of this quite small city. It's not about the Massive Attacks or the Portisheads or the Trickies or the Ronnie Sizes. It's more about, um, you know, the people that go out and they create that vibe. This is definitely the busiest part of town, like Park Street, the watershed, and um, you know, clubs like the Fekka, uh, all the surrounding clubs. These definitely get packed every single weekend. This is uh, the so-called White Ladies Road, um, Black Boy Hill territory. It's not hard to work out what it is. It's something to do with you know, the, um, you know, the history of the slave trade. You've had this place that has got black people, that's got people from all over the world. And what that's meant is that in the 90s, you have a generation of people who grow up with the idea that complexity, random possibilities, are all things to be welcomed. And all of those things really come together in the music that Ronnie Size makes. You don't get something that sounds like something else, you get something that sounds very unique. Who's playing that? Radio. What you hear is this music of um, real complexity. There are moments of silence, then there are moments of freneticism, then there are moments of sheer noise, then there are moments of beauty and of clarity. All of those things can happen within a single song, within a single track. Because effectively, that's kind of what it's like walking down the street. You can hear a car alarm, you can hear a fire alarm, you can hear a police siren. What you hear when you hear down bass is a crystallization of an urban experience. Yeah, so it's straight to the top. Rock it to the top. top, top. Yeah, just go straight up and go over. And that's when we hit my part of town. We used to walk up, you know, 
like from Carnival, you you know spend the whole day down there, and you know everything was so loud and loads of things were going on, and then you slowly start walking up the hill, and things would get quieter and quieter, and as you get to the top, you know the only thing you could hear was like the bass. How would I explain to someone what drum and bass is? It does centre a lot around the beat. This beat is um, stretched and put through a sampler and put onto a computer at around about 160 beats per minute. Layered on top of that could be anything. I go straight to my sampler, um, sample records, um, got some stuff here which I've been sampling over the last couple of months. The sampler itself is, is the new electric guitar, you know, it's, it is the kind of modern, current day, progressive instrument. With a sampler, that's a license. That's that's, that's, that's loads of 007s out there with license to kill. So basically the object is now is to be able to get these sounds here, you know, to, to, to the conductor, to, um, over to the sequencer. The sequencer is basically driving the sampling technology. You take the beats, you chop them up, you give them the sound you want in the sampler and then the sequencer is the engine that drives them forward. What the technology allows us to do is to be more creative and gives us more freedom. But what's more important than any of the machines is what's in here. Do you know what I mean? If you've got nothing in there, then all the equipment in the world ain't going to do you no good. So now you take the position of conductor to put it in where you feel it should go and at what time. Basically find the break and go for accounting. Oh, that sounds riffing. This is the next chapter right now, we're in it. We're in the next chapter. Page one. This was where hip hop started, you know, in New York, and to go to the place and not just to visit, but to actual to play with our version of our music, man, it's like, yeah, it's like a dream, man. Is this your first time out here? Yeah. What do you think? Love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. I'm moving out here tomorrow. No one wants to go back. <laughs> New York, live show, is very important. I don't really know if the American audience had to take on, you know, a British music. I mean, Americans have certainly taken on, you know, specific British artists, but all those artists from, you know, the Beatles, the Stones to Oasis are working variations on rock and roll, which is an American creation. Um, so th this will be interesting to see if Americans are open-minded enough to respond to something like that. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the house, I hope you're ready. It's time for the Sounds of Represents.
beginning of the show it was just vibe, man. We just come on and just bam, it's just vibe. Like, what are these guys doing, man? Yeah, who's out there? Who's that behind that man? I saw them flashing lights, but what's actually going on here? It's a steady build up of sounds, like the stabs coming, bam! I read the Times the other day and it's described this as um, a UFO landing. I wanted it to kind of be a cross between Star Wars meets uh, P Funk meets um, drum and bass. I've been influenced from, um, from music from America and music from Jamaica. You know, from America, especially the hip hop, a whole hip hop thing and the soul and you know even some early R and B's and James Brown and some um, Marvin Gaye. You know, that's always been my vision of um, American music, not so much from the rock angle, but more from a lot of black music. I want to thank everybody for turning up. This is our debut show in New York City, and what a wonderful turnout, man. Okay, so we'll continue the journey right about now, the German bass sound, the jungle sound. The good, good sound is a good vibe. It's about energy and about vibes, and we create that, and we show that to you. So right now, we're going to step inside something a little bit jazz. <laughs> something in there that made me think this could happen because I think they have a whole stage show you know there's this there's a notion that they're the band that could break jungle here <laughs> America is more about performance and once they see what he size represent can actually do it live and still have the full flavor as they say I think it will be over since winning the award we've been on the road doing the live show and you know traveling um, quite a lot but the live show has become you know, a key part of the uh, success why people are taking notice. Pass! Seeing all those keyboards, I still assumed that there was a duck machine playing and they were playing over the duck or something. I assumed, you get what I'm saying, but everything is being played live. He is playing that bass line on them keyboards live and Cross is playing them strings live. I, mean, I think all the guys that do live things are brave, man. They're brave because you've got like a drummer trying to drum like 160 BPM and that. I'm like, Fuss! That's just like dynamite. I mean, <laughs> that you got it. That's explosive. That that show is completely off the hook. Before we go up, we have to come down. I was fortunate to do a, a concert with Ronnie Size at Montreux in Switzerland and they took the stage and they took it by storm. It was a wonderful experience to see this music presented live. The audience response was incredible. P. 
people did, you know, think that this music was basically a studio-based music. I would just say that there's a new music and it's just got a lot of energy. And I felt that that energy on stage could just look so amazing. Dynamite has just got such a wicked stage presence and he knows how to just cheer up the crowd and they've got on the lead the vocalist she makes you tingle you get what I'm saying when she sings right you just feel like you're, you're shivering the way they use the vocals is again slightly reminiscent of, of that whole um, sound system tradition of mixing, emceeing and rapping with vocal performance. It's a kind of quite sort of fluid um, movement of musicians. I mean, almost the way jazz used to work, you know, where a, an alto player would come forward and you get a couple of solos and then you would step back, you know, stand in the wings, the classic image of nodding along, you know, and the pianist would take over. It's not just one front man, you know, holding the fort like Jagger or something. It's, it's much more kind of interplay, I think. How's everybody feeling now? Somebody feeling good? You feeling good? Well, let's go back inside that beat right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a razor. Razor. Rosso. That's right, so we're going to represent. Stop to bring it down so you're all truly on the set. The call. The call. Right now, my eyes and my ears are open. I'm ready for whatever's happening next. Check, 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 Mike, Mike. <laughs> no. Doing the video in Toronto was a, a massive learning experience for us. Action! Action! We have been walking up and down trying to be ourselves, which is not an easy thing to do. Especially when you've got a hundred people standing around looking. You know, we're not actors, we're not Marlon Brando. The concept of the video is um, time displacement time configuration and manipulation and structural management which is a very exciting concept which is, involves stopping time we did the video in toronto because we knew that toronto had like the futurism that's what we call them their buildings just look like they're coming straight out of you know 2001 We've got a certain amount of time to get to the airport and we can't make it so we have a device which freezes time and then we mingle in and out of everybody who's frozen and then we see some you know odd things going on. When the time gets frozen we kind of bounce around and things kind of look off key and kind of weird and we kind of get underneath things and around things and you know, the idea sounds good, uh, and it should come out. It should come out pretty good. Yes, another rubber duck ball for the chaser. New configuration, new grip, and new structure. Belts on the frame that don't hold that wall puncture. Sight, we wrap it up, it's wrap. We've 
been on the road now for you know, the best part of six weeks. You know, we've been in Europe, we've been in America, and now um, we're back in England, and the end of the tour is, is near. The rest of the one should be good, it should be heaving, it should be mad. That's going to be the bomb, guaranteed. Hometown, last day of the tour, yes. Coming home, everyone's going to be there, everyone and their dog is going to be there. One thing that I personally enjoy doing is playing to a home crowd. That's the biggest challenge of all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right now we're welcoming back Ronnie Size and the Represent crew, fresh back from their European and British tour. Also a trip down stateside, yes, New York. Right now they're back to represent in a Bristol style. I said a Bristol style. All right, okay, as you know, you're rocking with Represent, yeah? And this happens to be the last state of our tour with the UK right now, yeah? But you see, like, yeah, okay, hold it down. No. <laughs> right? But these past, these past few months, we was on a European tour, yeah? And we went to places like um, Germany, went to France, went to Italy, went to Spain. And this part of the show here, I used to come out on stage, right? I'm gonna re-announce, I used to come out on stage, I used to say, okay, for all the people that don't really know about German bass music, and don't really know about jungle, and don't know, but you know what? We're in Bristol right now, and all you know about jungle music. That's the step inside that sweet sound, that beautiful sound. You know, it's a sound for one and all, with no discrimination, no segregation, no separation, no segmentation. It's one nation, representation. Sounds ancient with the one they call. Shit. The fall. Things have happened with the German bass of the jungle, and there's going to be a lot of mixed views where some people are saying that it's been taken from the underground to the overground, some people are saying that it's you know, being taken mainstream, and there's people that are selling out. I don't look at it like that, I see it that doors have been opened, and now that the doors are open, who's going to come through? Mm -hmm. 